Hi, I'm Kai Chang Tom, and I'm bringing you a super special holiday video in which I combine the soulful stylings of my long form column with the snappy charm of my video series in order to bring you some much needed holiday cheer from the heart of the pandemic. So what is a super special holiday edition? Well, it's sort of like when you were 10 years old and reading a children's book series in the 90s and like there was a big thick edition where the Animorphs went back in time to become dinosaurs or I don't know, the Babysitter's Club did that road trip across America. You remember that one there were the boys and then Marianne did that thing. Anyway, spoiler alert, a super special holiday edition is like a longer version of the normal thing where it's super special and for the holiday. This super special holiday video event is about something really important that's happening in our world right now, the coronavirus pandemic. So this would be like, I don't know, when we were nine years old and we had to run out to the bookstore to get the copy of the hork Bajir Chronicles, that thing that all of us did. This is me giving you the COVID-19 Chronicles from my apartment. So of course, normally I wait for someone to send me a question before offering advice, you know, like a demure and proper lady. Because this is an unusual event, I'm going to offer you some advice for free, unsolicited, because if there's anything I've learned in my 15 year career of working with people, it is that there is nothing more helpful than unsolicited advice. So these are some spontaneous thoughts about surviving the second wave and moving into 2021, the next best period of our lives. So one of the first things that my editor and my producer asked me for in this video was like a list of holiday survival tips, things I'm doing and that we can all do to weather the psychological snowstorm of the holidays and the pandemic combined. So before I jump into that, let me just say that one of the things I like most about being an advice columnist for the apocalypse, I don't know when apocalypse became my brand, but there it is, Kai Cheng, woman of the apocalypse. One of the things I love about that is that uh, an advice column is usually considered service journalism. So, so, so for those of you not in the biz, it's like light and fluffy journalism, human interest things, stuff that you read to get away from the world. But then an apocalypse is something staggeringly frightening and horrific that brings an end to all the things that we know and hold dear. And so when you combine those two things, light and fluffy, staggering, staggeringly frightening, light and fluffy, staggeringly frightening, we get something that speaks to the absurd nature of human life, like the angst of our collective suffering and also the weird humor that we need to get through it all. Okay, so you know, survival tips for the second wave, sort of the same as survival tips for the first wave. Cover your mouth, wash your hands, don't go on planes, don't talk to people, see no one, try not to go to work unless of course you have to go to work for survival and money and stuff. Um, you could do yoga, you could do meditation, you could buy a body pillow, you know, in place of human touch. I hear that pillows are a great substitute for human bodies, just saying. You could get a pet, you could start a movie club, you could play board games online, you could decide to watch your way through all of the terrible gay teen movies of the 90s and early thousands, let me tell you, that is a deep well, deep. You know, start praying again. Revisit religion, call your mother, talk to your family, be grateful that you're alive. Wasn't that helpful? So here's the thing. I actually think that some of the most useful survival tips might actually be like anti-survival tips, like tips for how to let things die so that the rest of you can live. So this brings me to some etymological wonderings. Of course. The Greek root of the word apocalypse means to uncover or to reveal. The Greek root of the word crisis means decision or to arrive at a decision. I think this is important because it reminds us that in this time of crisis, of needing to make decisions, of apocalypse, of the veil being ripped off of society and us being forced to look at what's really there underneath all the inequities and social oppressions, all those vulnerabilities and frailties, our own human nature, what the things that we're willing to to sacrifice for the safety of others and those things that I guess we're not willing to sacrifice for the safety of others, this time reminds us of what we need to let go of, of the decisions we might need to make, like, oh, I don't know, uh, putting some limits on endless capitalism, deciding to take care of our elders, investing in the healthcare system, doing mutual aid. This is a pandemic. Pan, it means it affects all of us. This is an apocalypse. Our true selves are being revealed. This is a crisis. We have to decide who we're going to be. 
So here are some anti-survival survival tips. One, allow yourself to feel your feelings, whether they're happy feelings or sad ones or frustrated or angry. Let yourself feel them as much as you want to. Two, use the coping mechanisms that are available to you, whether they're popular or you got them from a magazine or you know maybe they're not coping mechanisms that other people would use. Use the ones you have. Whatever gets you through is the thing that's gonna get you through. Three, let the existential dread set in. Let it set in. Four, accept that we are all going to die someday. I will turn this around at the next point. Five, remind yourself, today is not that day. Today is not that day. When we allow ourselves to feel, to live fully in this moment that we find ourselves in, as full human beings with the full spectrum of emotion, we open ourselves to the possibility of real hope. False hope, we know all about that stuff. It's what they tell us on the media, it's what politicians are always spewing at us. On some level, we always know when we're being gaslit, when the hope that is being offered to us is false. Because false hope is the illusion of normalcy, and we know, deep on a cellular level, we know this is not normal. Real hope is seeing the real world for what it is and choosing to hope anyway. So here are some things I feel really hopeful about for 2021. One, the death knell of the short-term rental industry. Goodbye, bitches. Two, the end of workplace commutes. It's not necessary to drive two hours in the morning and two hours, two hours in the evening. It's just not necessary. Three, the advent of accessible work, education, and event planning online. We can go to things now. We could always go to things. People who are disabled should get to go to things. They always should have gotten to go to things. Four, the end of the Trump administration. Bye, Felicia. Five, the new Babysitter's Club series on Netflix. It is just so good. Six, the mainstream embrace of police abolitionism. We might not have gotten there yet, but we are going to get there. We are going to get rid of the police and prisons and live in a better world with a better justice. The coming of a new year is a time for intention setting and self-reflection. I speak, of course, of New Year's resolutions. Ah, New Year's, that time when a young person's heart turns naturally to thoughts of calorie counting, fit bidding, steps watching, weight watching, weight lifting, drinking less, exercising more, eating less, bullet journaling more, yoga, meditation, getting a life coach, generally self-optimizing. So here's the thing, I actually have no advice, zero advice, zip advice, zilch advice about how you should change or what you should change or where you should change. I don't give a shit about any of that. I actually have some questions though that I would like to ask you. That is right, in Anarchist Queerlandia, advice columnist asks you. So instead of ideas for resolutions, these questions are like things that I think about all the time. Things maybe you want to think about a little bit or all the time if you're obsessive like me. Um, not like because you should be a different person than who you are, more like how can you be more the person that you already are? Internal values aligned with external behaviors. My first question for you is, what would it be like if you accepted that everyone is inherently worthy of love, including yourself? Question the second is, what are the values by which you judge others? Question the third, what are the values by which you judge yourself? Are these values the same or different as those you use to judge others? Question numero cap is, what are the behaviors that define a loving partner, friend, or family member. Question the fifth. When you are trying to do something really hard that you always wanted to do, like breaking a habit, getting a degree, finishing an art project, launching a business, what are the kinds of support that you need from yourself? And what are the kinds of supports that you need from others? And the last question is my classic question. What would happen if you offered compassion to the people in your life who have made mistakes? And what would happen if you offered yourself compassion for the mistakes you know you have made? 
Okay, so that's the end of the video, folks. Uh, I want to say thanks so much to Extra for having me on camera. I don't know why these people keep me around, but as long as they're paying, I will keep doing. Uh, thanks to our amazing audience. I'd like to thank my mother and all my sponsors. I don't have any sponsors, but if you want to sponsor me, I love money. I will leave you here with these thoughts about the apocalypse uncovering and crisis decision making. In our darkest moments, we discover who we are. And in order to do that discovery, we need to look around ourselves and recognize the dark. We need to know that all growth begins in darkness and in struggle. That's where movement and politics are born. And that's also where personal growth and development is born. So on this eve of 2021, at the end of the world or edge of the apocalypse, I say to you, who do you want to be? You get to decide. This has been the holiday super special video edition of Ask Kai. I'm Kai Cheng Tom. Have a great year. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Trust your heart.